much a surprise to me as it was to you. Brother Ed's out in a neat little doctor, so uh, he called me this afternoon and his um, lights are seem to be different than usual. I don't know what it is, but almost too bright. But uh, appreciate you being here tonight. Uh, had a couple different messages I was looking at, and uh, actually uh, they sort of mingled on me for some reason. Uh, we're looking at John chapter 1 to start with. Well, I got a microphone. My voice ain't working just right. I got some sinus going on or something, and everything just sort of ringing in my ears right now. So um, speakers are just me. But uh, in the book of John chapter 1, it says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. You know, if this is the only scripture that we had, it ought to give us some direction. Because, you know, uh, a lot of times when you're looking for answers, you, you want some experience. You want, you want to find something that has worked, or you want to find... Uh, a source that, that's been there for a while to know what's going on. And it says, in the beginning was the Word. Then it says, all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. It makes that real clear. You know, we look around, and obviously we see things built in front of us. I'm propped on this podium here that's uh, some man that made sawdust. Sort of nicknamed Brother Keith Sawdust because he makes a lot of it. But uh, some man that made sawdust also put this thing together. But as I see the grain here, I know that God made the tree. So there was not, not anything. Uh, we actually changed the shape of some things and we did some things. But basically, what we do is make things that God has already put out the product. And uh, that, that tells us that uh, he ought to have the answers for us. He ought to be able to uh, give us what we need to stand in. Uh, he goes on to talk in verse 6, and that's what sort of crossed, this is sort of just a springboard uh, verse here, because I'm going back to the book of Luke in just a minute. It says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John, saying, came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He talks about John the Baptist here, and, and it, it makes sure that we know that he was not the light, but Jesus actually proclaimed that, that John was the greatest. Uh, I think he put him above Moses, he put him above Joshua, and but yet he was still just a man. Now, I want to look back at the birth of John the Baptist and let's talk about that just for a minute. Uh, that uh, when, of course, I would have to do a lot of reading about Zacharias when the angel came to him, uh, but when the angel came and said you're going to have a baby and uh, it says in verse 13 of chapter 1 it says but the angel said unto him fear not Zacharias for thy prayer is heard and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son and thou shalt call his name John and thou shalt have joy and gladness many shall rejoice at his birth so we see some glad tidings come here these folks are going to have a baby and couldn't and uh, down in verse 18, Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife will stricken in years. He said, you know, you've got to prove this to me. How many times do we want God to say, All right, God, you've got to show me a sign. Prove this to me. I mean, 
Uh, here we, we say, this, well, this guy had an angel standing in front of him. I believe if I had an angel standing there, we got something better than an angel. We got God's word that tells us what will happen if we do some things. And yet we still don't do those things. But Zechariah said to the angel, whereby shall I know this? In the angel, verse 19, the angel answered and said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God, and I am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. And basically, he always said, don't you know who I am? I mean, surely you've heard of me. I, I'm an angel, and you can believe me. But he said, Behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not the words which shall be fulfilled in their season. Now think about it. Sometimes we say, God, give me proof. Show me. Well, I don't think Zacharias wanted the proof, did he? I mean, all of a sudden, he went from not being able to talk much in his household until he couldn't talk any. He had to not be able to say a word. And now, for his job, he, he sort of needed to be able to talk a little bit. Now, sometimes we say, God... Uh, show me, give me the proof. Sometimes we don't really know what we're asking for. But we look on over a little far farther than uh, when the John the Baptist was born. Uh, verse 57 of chapter 1 says, Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered. She brought forth a son. Neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her. And they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. Don't you just love busybody camp folks going to tell you? I have an aunt. This, for some reason, my mama let her end up naming her kids. And she was mama's probably least favorite sister. <laughs> but for some reason, she just said, this is how it's going to be. That's what was going on here. Ken Bolton said, hey, we're just going to name him Zacharias. And his mother answered and said, not so, but he shall be called John. They said unto her, there's none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to his father how he would have him called. And he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying, his name is John, and they marveled all. Let me stop right there. Now, let's look at John. He says, he says, how am I going to know this, angel? How am I going to know this is going to happen? He says, you're not going to be able to talk until this happens. Well, John was born. Now, he was probably saying, hey, I just, they just told me that my baby's born. I'm going to get to talk now. But he couldn't. What happened? What happened? You see, our problem is we don't listen to all the word of God sometimes. That that's happened throughout the Bible. I mean, we sometimes people want to add to it. In the garden, when the when the serpent asked Eve, she said, "You know, the Lord has said this," and she added to it. Sometimes we want to leave off some of what the Lord tells us uh, for His provisions. You know, we quote scripture verses some. And, and we leave out sometimes the last part of it looking for a promise from God. But here, John probably said, what happened? So we know he couldn't talk at this point because he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying, his name is John, and they marveled. And his mouth opened immediately, and his tongue loose. Now the angel said, you're going to have a baby, and you're going to name him John. You see the qualifier right there? He wasn't just to have a baby. He was to name him John, too. So I think sometimes our lesson here is to try to learn that we got to obey God fully in the whole works. we got to look at the whole word and go that route. Now let's look, let's look back at, at what happens then. He said his name's going to be John. That ought to have been good enough. And his mouth was open immediately and his tongue loose and he spake and praised God. Fear came on all that dwelt around about them. Now, I'm going to jump back on 65 and go all the way down through the rest of this chapter here before we finish. But let's look at uh, let's look at probably what he was going to do. 
without looking down at your Bible, let's think a minute what would have happened in most cases. Now you can look at the Bible if you want to. I just, I just don't want to cheat and jump ahead. Of course, you know the story anyway, so there's no cheating going on anyway. But here, the baby is born. He's named him John. It's a miraculous thing that they even had a baby. And then the angel had said, so we know he, he, was, he was a special baby. And what normally happens when a baby's born? Man, I've been to hospitals when babies have been born. People bring footballs to the hospital because the little boy is born. Like he's going to play with the football. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just crazy. They ooh and all, and they say, oh, isn't he pretty? And, and all newborn babies are ugly, right? Mm -hmm. I come to men and said yes, and the lady said no. Uh, they're all red and splotchy and, and crying, and, and so, but, but people carry on about them babies. They say, you know, he looks like he, the mama, or looks like the daddy, and they carry on. They talk about what he's going to do. He's going to play football. He's going to do whatever his daddy did, and they carry on and on and on. He's just uh, a whole big to do. So here's what Zacharias is going to do. He's going to do the same thing. He's going to say, hey, man, he's going to, he's going to have the fastest camel of anybody, you know, or something like that. But no, what does he do? It says, uh, it said, there came all that drove uh, about them, and all these sayings were noise brought throughout the hill country of Judea, and all that heard them, laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. Now, that was a, a good time for Zacharias to carry on about what his boy was going to do. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Now, this had not got anything to do with John. I mean, or I say John was going to uh, he was going to announce, he was going to broadcast it to himself some, but he was not the one that was redeeming anybody and hath raised up and horn salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Talking about Jesus here. And he, he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies, from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we be delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness for him all the days of our lives. He spent all these verses actually bragging on Jesus. Now he talked about the enemies, and, and of course some people would interpret that he was talking about, you know, everything. Philistines to whoever else was her enemies in those days. But I think he was talking about the enemy of sin here. And that he had uh, he had been delivered from that. Jesus was delivering us from that enemy of sin. And he spent all that time bragging on Jesus. When most people would have been bragging on the brand new baby. Now, he does go ahead and talk about this new baby. He said, And thou, child, talking about John, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and the shadow of death to, to guide our feet in the way of peace child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the desert until the day of his uh, sh showing unto Israel. I think our lesson here, the lesson to me at least is, is first of all, I read John chapter 1. God created everything. Nothing was created that was not made by him. So, therefore, he's got the answer. Uh, I think even in the times when we want to proclaim everything to toot our own horn, we got to remember it's all about Jesus. You're right. It's all about Him. Uh, 
heard a song today. I, I, I have a CD in my shop. And, uh, I, you know, I don't even know the title of this song. I don't think I've ever heard it. But uh, it talks about, it's all about him. And really nothing else seems to matter when we boil it down to it. Uh, you know, uh, I used to, in basic training, I had a drill sergeant. He used to have this saying all through basic training, don't sweat the small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. And toward the end of our training, you know, he was kept saying that about some big things. I mean, if you didn't pass your weapons qualifications, you got recycled, which meant you had to go start back all over basic training. You didn't want to do that. If you didn't pass your PT test, you got the that dreaded name recycled, came back up. You have to start all over and do it all over and over again. And you keep getting all these threats. And so he would say that about all this stuff. And, and of course, every, every one of them didn't seem like small. It seemed like large. But at the end of our training, he said the same thing about something. And he said, it's all small stuff. It's all small stuff. And I look at sometimes back at the things that I fret on things I get troubled about or aggravated with, you know, sometimes it's nothing more than the microwave's not passing. You know, the small stuff. And yet, I think Zacharias had the right answer here. Even at the time when most people have been rejoicing by the brand new sun. Now, this wasn't just, this, this was a special, of course, all of them are special. Everybody except Tiffany, she is special. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all had to know her when she was two or three years old. <laughs> That's why she has the nickname Bird. She was a bird. <laughs> uh, all the nursery workers quit. Uh, <laughs> it was bad. And then Noah come along and made up. But I uh, went good then. But all the kids are special. John was a miracle kid. I mean, how, how many people do you know that the angel has come and proclaimed not only that it was going to happen, but went ahead and gave you a name? Uh, my name is sort of plain. I have a grandpa named Joe Watkins. I have an uncle named Jesse Joe Jr. He had a son named him Joey. And, I mean, we got more Joes in the family. And I remember when I was a kid, Mama had to go down to the post office and explain to the postmaster who lived where and who was who. <laughs> and the postmaster said, Lady, why didn't you think about it before you named all these kids? Of course, she said all the dogs got the good names. <laughs> so that's the best. Now, she didn't say that, but that was uh, the story. Uh, but what's that name? I mean, uh, Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 11. I think that's right. Anybody can give me that real quick and see if I'm looking at the right place. I may be in the wrong place. Ecclesiastes 7, 11, maybe? No, no, no. A good name. A good name. Uh, what is that? It's chapter 7, I'm pretty sure. But anyway, a good name is uh, better than a precious one. And the day of death than the day of one's birth. What does that mean? What does that mean? I, I didn't plan on this verse. It just sort of fit in here, and I wish I'd got it prepared for it. it. It's better than precious one. And the day of death than the day of one's birth. Now, I don't know how I got so tied up with death. Well, I do. But you know, work at funeral homes, dead the corner, and I see how a horse and carriers and carriers dead folks. So I end up being tied up, and, 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 and death seems so bad sometimes. I mean, I, I had a 
coroner called Saturday evening, a motorcycle fatality. It just so happened I didn't have to go to the house and make a notification. Those are hard. Now those are tough to do sometimes when people have no idea why you're knocking on the door. That's one of the toughest parts of it. But you think, how can that be a good day? Well, wait a minute. How can that be a good day? But the day of death and the day of one's birth. And when I was born, they threw the name Joel. I had a, one grandpa named Benjamin. Benjamin Joseph, to me, would have been a nice ring to it. But Benny Joe, they chopped that up. Oh, I hate that name. I hated that name. When I went to school in the first grade, they started calling me by my first name. Everybody I went to grammar school calls me Benny, I said. But we moved away from that grammar school, and I made sure I didn't tell anybody my name was Benny when I started high school. But what's that a name? When they tacked that name on me as a little child, it didn't mean much. It's just, I mean, it was, that was what the kid's name is. I mean, it uh, didn't mean a whole lot. But now, you say my name to somebody, and sometimes they either look sour or chuckle a little bit. They've got a thought in their head. See, there's something that I have made my name to me one way or the other, good or bad. It, it, it's not the same. It's not the same name as I was born. It means something. So when he says the day of death than the day of one's birth, it can be, it can be worse. Someone that has to be uh, endures some capital punishment because of the crimes that they've committed. Their day of death is not a good day. But what he's talking about here, and, and Solomon had, has given us, it is ways of living. He, he tells us in chapter 12, Ecclesiastes, uh, he gives us the conclusion, the whole matter. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, the last verse, tells us that uh, he's going to give us the conclusion of the whole matter. Uh, that's not, the, that's not the last verse. That's the last verse, I'm sorry. Ah, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. The whole matter. This is 12 chapters of Solomon doing experiments to find out what the meaning of life is. And he says the conclusion of the whole matter is this. And I would expect the conclusion of something this important to be Twelve more chapters or more. But he sums it up. He says, Fear God and keep his commandments. Fear God and keep his commandments. Which boils back down to what I read in John chapter 1 that he made everything. And he knows how it's going to work. So if we fear him and, and do what he says, that's all we got to know. That's all we got to know. It's just all down to the simple stuff. It's all small stuff when we look at it that way. If we can just obey God and put Jesus first, fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Now, of course, there's all subheadings under what it is we do. What it is, it is we do. I mean, some things we don't necessarily want to do, uh, but... Uh, we always find out that was what was for the best. So, what are we going to do with the rest of our lives? So that the day of one's death is better than when he was born. Have we done anything that say that our day of death will be better? Of course, we can put things under that, those headings like Come up with a cure of cancer. Boy, think about it. What if one of us in this room could come up with a cure of cancer? Our name would go down in history. And it would be good for every person to 
that ever had that dreaded disease for the length of their days would have been without. Now, how long has that been for? Think about it. I have no idea where to search for the cure of cancer. They would help somebody live another 10 years, 20 years, 40 years, 50 years. But I do know, I do know what it takes to cure someone of a sin sickness. And how long has that been for? 20 years? It's good for eternity. It's good for eternity. I, every time I, I do that part of that message, I always think of Michael Morris. I don't know if y'all remember him. He used to sit over here with us. Got saved in the Barrow County Jail. Uh, called me and asked me about coming to church after he got out. Thanked me for giving him the gospel. Started coming to church. Then, He'd been coming here for about a, well, it was about a year, I guess. And I said, Michael, you had no problem with alcohol because that was his problem. He said, I still think about it all the time, but I haven't tasted it since then. He said, God saved me from that. And on Christmas Day, he was at his daddy's house. Got to feeling bad and went and laid down on the bed. His family went to check on him when he stayed gone a long time. He had Two or three, which was 53, I think, passed away with a heart attack. And I spent quite a few years still now. But I'm going to see Michael again one day. And I believe he's going to say, hey, I appreciate you telling me about Jesus. I didn't do anything. I didn't physically do anything. I just pointed. I just pointed. I think that's what we got to do. we got to see that God shows us that this stuff works. And we got to pass it along. Well, I didn't have a long message. I guess you're glad that it. You know, I didn't go to sleep once. But if anybody had anything to say, I always give an opportunity because I feel like usually my messages are lacking somewhere and God gives somebody congregation uh, a thought that goes along with it. Anybody got anything to say before we finish? Come on, Matt. You got something to say. <clears throat> well, I appreciate y'all being here. I know we're, we're getting out too early. But most of that's Tony's fault. He read fast. He sang fast. Let's have a word right now.